Hi, welcome to episode 5 of Cracking the Codex for the Tau Empire. This is the Cow Yon detachment. This is obviously the index detachment that we had before we got the full codex. It is revamped and changed, and I think, uh, personally, for the better. How do you feel about this one, John? So, as an index, it didn't quite get my attention because I'm quite impatient as a gamer. I want to shove things in your face, turn one, turn two... And then kind of you have to pick up the pieces. Since the indexes, I've been playing a bit more measured. Mm. So a lot of staging armies, things that have been a bit more attritional. So with this new Tau army that I've got kind of in a box just out of camera, um, who knows? Uh, it might be something I try at least dabble with and see if it clicks because sometimes subtlety actually can work. Sometimes, sometimes. We'll see if it works this Maybe. time. So, the Cow Yon Detachment. This is, um, as always, you get for the greater good. We'll summarise it quickly. Pick three units. Two of them belong to you. One belongs to your opponent. They all have to be able to see each other. Um, one of your units is the Guided Unit, and one is the Observer. The Guided Unit gets plus one to Ballistic Skill when shooting at the Spotted Unit, the enemy unit, and minus one Ballistic Skill when it shoots at anything else, so you don't want to split your fire. Um, the Observer Unit has Marker Light. It also means that the Guided Unit ignores cover against the Spotted Unit. So, efficiency buffs into single units. However... If you are in Kaoyon, you get the Patient Hunter. From the third battle round onwards, ranged weapons that your models have have sustained its one or sustained its two if they're targeting their unit's spotted unit. So basically, if your unit is guided, they are getting sustained its two as long as they're shooting specifically into the spotted unit. Something to note, this is different to how it was in the index. Before, it was just the spotted unit got the sustained hits, so it could split fire quite efficiently, not care about the minus one to hit, uh, minus one ballistic skill, but that has gone away. So you definitely want to be using all of your shots into a single target. I think that's less of an issue now, to be honest, because we've got smaller units in town. You're not necessarily yep. running a big Death Star unit, because you can't. So it's you're probably putting all your shots into one unit anyway. What are your thoughts? So, I just, it's... I like it. I just mm -hmm. wish I could have it earlier. So, yeah. Hopefully, there's a way to get it earlier, perhaps. Maybe. Yeah. It feels like there are some armies that will just cause you issues because they can press you on turn one and two. And I think the big part of the game plan with this army is to not let your opponent press you too much before you yeah. get your efficiency boost. Especially if you go second, they've got three whole turns to try and shut down your army before you can do anything. Yeah. Um, so you want to you want to pu push them off as much as possible. Um, especially in missions where you want to, you know, pick up late game scoring, it's not too bad. Um, yeah. I think it's it's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. It's a very big efficiency boost when it does come in on turn three. Though. All right, why don't you give us a run through on the enhancements? <clears throat> right, so first one, exemplar of the Kalyon. So Tau Empire model only. Again, no crew shapers are allowed this. Uh, whilst the bearer is leading a unit, the, the patient hunter detachment rule applies to that unit from the second battle round onwards instead of from the third. So I, this is instantly what I was thinking um, that I'd like to see. It feels like something you're going to just put in every list. Oh, yeah. Realistically. Right. The only decision making you have to do with this enhancement is which unit yeah. you put it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the only thing. So this is your big tool to basically say to your opponent, if you go too aggressive early on, I will punish you. This is my aggressive tool to do so. Yeah. Previously, we were seeing on the big brick of six crisis and a cold star. Yeah. Uh, I now th I'm leaning towards putting on breaches because with the sustained hits two and the potential for full rerolls from Tetras, you can get very silly and you can get a whole lot of hits with this. Yeah, because you pace your army out, essentially, don't you? So you spend turn one kind of staging forward, pressuring and deterring them from coming too far forward. Mm. And then this unit does its thing, turn two. And then turn three, the rest of your army does its thing. Absolutely, yeah. So, what else have we got? Uh, precision of the patient hunter. So all patient hunter friendly. Um, so this is Tau Empire model only. Each time the bearer makes a range attack, add one to the hit roll. From the third battle round onwards not from when Patient Hunter is live, add one to the wound roll as well. Yeah, that is a key distinction to make there, because if you had this somehow in a squad that was getting the benefit of Patient Hunter turn two, which I don't think you could anyway, no. because it'd be two character models, 
However, you wouldn't be able to get the buff yeah. early. There's no way to game it, basically. Um, this is cheap, is the main thing I'll say about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's cheap, good, though, Ed, sometimes. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate it. I actually quite like it, and it, it made it into the example list we've got at the end here. Yeah. So we're at a point where you now might start thinking about Crisis Suits as a vehicle to buff the commanders they're with. Yes. In that case, if you're taking, for example, um, if you're using them to get the additional AP and you're taking a Cold Star Commander with, you know, like a sick, like a high output burst and a couple of missile pods, if you're also getting plus one to wound on turn three with that, that's quite nice. Obviously, it doesn't buff the squad, but you're effectively taking the Crisis Suits as a vehicle to buff the commander. So this just leans into it at 15 points. It's fairly, you know reasonably costed at doing that as well um i like it if you've got spare points i think that's where i'd i'd put it cool and then we got solid image projection unit so after both players have deployed their armies select up to three tau empire units from your army note that this just says tau empire so it's quite free um and redeploy them when doing so you can set those up in strategic reserves if you wish regardless of how many units are already in strategic reserves the thing that puts me off with this is it's after you've deployed but not before the turn roll. Yeah. So you don't know who's going first. So. It's expensive as well. It's 30 points. Yeah. Um, there's definitely definite uses for it if that's the sort of game that you like to play. I think it's I think it's f- terrain dependent more than anything else. Yeah. So depending on whether there's going to be big fire lanes that you want to try and avoid or bait your opponent into deploying into. Yeah. Or, I play mostly on UKTC. Deployment is honestly fairly cut and dry. You just put your things where they go because that's where they fit so they can't get shot in turn one. There's not a huge amount of play outside of it other than going to, you know, which of these two fire lanes do I want to monopolize early on? In my opinion, it doesn't have much play there, but other formats, I think it has more. And I I guess if you're seeing a lot of slow-moving armies that once they're deployed, that's where they're going to be. Being able to kind of do the gotcha and kind of switch yourself up a bit. Yeah. Could be useful. It it feels like the the ninth edition Ultramarines trick with this, where it's cute, and that one in a hundred games it'll be really quite fun when it actually pays off. But sure, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's yeah. just like cool. And then through Unity Devastation. So again, Tau Empire model unit only, no Croup Shapers. Uh, while the bearer is leading a unit, each time that unit is an observer unit until the end of the phase range weapons equipped by models in their guided unit have lethal hits whilst targeting the spotted unit so this is something that exists already uh, in the the index attachment it's not something that was played particularly because lethal hits are fine in fact mm. they're quite good if you can put yeah. them on a unit that it struggles into, for example armor which is typically where tau have been struggling into high toughness um models you can't take it because the character has to be in a unit and that unit has to be the one that's doing the spotting you can't get the full hit rerolls from the tetra which means that you can't fish for the lethal hits which is where lethal hits becomes very powerful yeah um there is a little bit of utility here. You can use the Fire Knife Battle Suits, which I think this is the only detachment where I'm quite excited to run Fire Knife Battle Suits. They get reroll one state at all times, or full hit rerolls if they're targeting something that's at starting strength. Um, typically, 40k, even 10th edition 40k, is quite a lethal game. It's not uncommon that things die. Like, they'll go out into the open, then they'll die, and you'll just send out fresh units every turn. So it's quite common for you to actually be getting the effect of the full hit rerolls. If you wanted to, you could spend the points to give a character that's spotting for the Fire Knife unit um, full hit rerolls. Uh, sorry, uh, lethal hits, and then they get the full hit rerolls. You can also put this on a character that joins the Pathfinders, and they can spot twice. So there is utility there. I think it's. I'd have to play with it more to to want to put it in my list, I think, is where I'm yeah. at with it. Because the guns that I'm the problem the only problem is the only unit that can get the full hit rerolls is the fire knife battle suits and they're only running missile pods which are not something that i massively care about putting into vehicles they're nice to get there but they're not you know it's not broadsides it's not riptides if you could give one of them lethal hits and also get the rerolls i think i'm quite excited 
but this this falls into the cute but maybe yeah. not quite there for me it still feels like it's the third pick if you've got the points out of each of the out of the four right but yeah i agree i think you have to be running the right setup for it um i don't think you just whack it on a commander that's not a commander you don't necessarily wrap it uh whack it on a fire knife that just yeets up the board i don't know that that does much for you unless you're assuming that you can't get your tetras and your uh stealth yeah. suits in line of sight to do the spotting um but yeah if you've got the spare points i'm not upset about putting it in yeah Cool. All right. Um, so enhancements, I think, pretty okay. Some are better than yeah. others. Uh, one incredible, one two conditional, and then one that really depends on terrain. However, yeah. the stratagems, I think these have got a glow up since the uh, since the the change to the index. Yeah. So key difference here. Um, there is four battle tactics, which I think so far for the towel is actually the highest we've seen. I um, believe so. Yeah. And no two CP ones either, which is interesting. Yeah, so slightly funny. They did have an enhancement that lets you repeat battle tactics that has then been moved out of their detachment yeah. um, and moved into the retaliation cadre. Don't worry about it. You can take yeah. Farsight, and I think oh. taking Farsight is a consideration in this detachment. Um, yeah. Two of the stratagems are quite nice on the squads that you might want to put Farsight with. You know, extra AP or plus one to wound. No spoilers when we get to those in a second. Uh, but those are ones that you're quite happy to use again but yeah um but i think it's uh in this case it might be more of a negative because you know yeah. your opponent Vect. can <laughs> absolutely <laughs> there are four very good targets your opponent can vect which if you don't tell them which is the best one you just say here's the four that you can vect it might confuse them at least yeah right so let's start from the top i suppose um first one is attempting trap which is in your shooting phase one Tau Empire unit from your army that has not been selected to shoot this phase. The first time you use the stratagem, you must also select one objective marker that is not in your opponent's deployment zone. Until the end of the battle, that becomes your trap objective marker. The effect is that until the end of the phase, each time a model in your unit makes a ranged attack that targets an enemy unit within range of your trap marker, add one to the wound roll. This is incredible. This is so good. You so there is it first and second battle rounds, though. That is a downside, one hundred percent. But again, leans into you know you're trying to stall out yeah. the game plan. Uh, it would be re. I think this would be. Um, I'm not going to be hyperbolic. It's not the best strat in the game if it if you can use it on turn one. But it's it's a very good strat. Mm. The limiter of being on turn three is sad. Your unit that you've given you know the enhancement to get their full sustained hits on turn two the patient hunter you, you don't get that ability to use a tempting target with them previously unfortunately so this is just locked to turn three yeah it the basic what it is is you get plus one to wound for everything on an objective and in subsequent turns when you use the strat it's the same objective that sounds like a negative realistically you just go all right we're gonna fight over the middle objective that's pretty yeah. much how warhammer is played at the moment so you're just going to say, turns three, four, and five, I have a plus one to wound from my entire army into everything that's on the middle objective. Yeah. Um, I think that's really solid, I think, especially because it's not locked to a single unit. It's everything that targets everything on that objective. What's the, the name of the mission that's with the Alpha and the Omega? Because <laughs> yeah. this is really helpful on that one, I'd say, as well. Yes, that's true, because you can you know which one is disappearing before you use the strat, obviously. Yeah. So you can pick the one that disappears on turn five, uh, that doesn't disappear, sorry, yeah. and just say, look, you want to fight over this? That's fine, but we're going to have a scrap. Yeah. I do quite like that. Um, yeah, good strat. Yeah, solid. Um, would spend CP on. Right, the next Absolutely. one, point blank ambush. So again, in your shooting phase, I'm surprised Tau don't really like to shoot. Um, <laughs> the the target is one Tau Empire unit from your army that has not been selected to shoot this phase. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes a ranged attack, the target's enemy unit within nine improve the AP of the, um, of the attacks by one. You cannot use this again in the first and second battle rounds. So outside of the first and second battle round, the, what an incredibly Montcar stratagem to have in the cow yon detachment yeah. you've got to be within nine inches to use it that's fine that's where i want to be anyway um i think this is you there's no way for you to deep strike and get this bonus so you know cards on the table yeah. you rapid do ingress. have to you do have to rapid ingress or just be on the board or you know breaches this is incredible on breaches and i think this is where you're going to be using it a lot of the time yes. 
just getting that additional AP. Um, you're getting rerolls to wound if they're on a, a, an objective already. You know, if they're <laughs> if they're on an objective and it's your tempting trap and your point blank am- point blank ambush, you're going to do some real damage. You know, you line up some Tetris to get rerolls to hit with your sustained hits too. Things are just going to absolutely melt. So we're seeing the ability to point deny primary very strong in this army. I think it's a really um, a really good stratagem. The limiter is a real downside, but you're trying to play the game in turns three, four, five anyway. Yeah. Right. Next one is coordinate to engage, which is again your shooting phase. One tower empire unit from your army that has been selected as an observer unit as part of the greater good. Um, until the end of the phase, each time a model in your unit makes an attack that targets their spotted unit, improve the ballistic skill of the um, of the attacks by one. And if the unit has the marker like keyword, that attack has the ignores cover ability. Yep, this is quite nice. If you find yourself in a position where you've got two aggressive units that both want to get benefits, shooting into something, but you can't get your Tetras or your stealth suits in line of sight. You know, if you've got two Breacher squads, because Breachers can go quite fast in Devilfish, advance the Devilfish up, disembark, then shoot. It means that you can get the entire bonus on one squad and then most of the bonus on the other squad. It's pretty solid. I'd be running, you know, at least one Markalite in all of my squads just for this ability every time i think i like it i hope not to have to use it but having that in your toolbox to get like sort of pull you out of a positioning error i think is really good yeah or if someone's just killed something that you like say your spot the unit you wanted to be spotted with they've just picked it up yeah yeah right the last battle tactic is wall of mirrors uh which is end of your opponent's fight phase one stealth ghost kill or commander shadow stun sun uh shadow sun unit from your army um remove your unit from the battlefield and place it into strategic reserves um just the only re- re- uh, requirement is you can't be within engagement range so it's it's giving them the uppy downy it's the uppy downy strat it's really really good um the fact that you can do this on ghost kills is frankly absurd um because a ghost for anyone who hasn't looked closely at the data sheet a ghost kill is just a mini riptide it's not that mini as well um against some armies it's not unkillable but like it'll weather one turn of something yeah because you you ignore two um attacks that cause a wound you have to do it before you roll the save but if your opponent's running something like eldar and they have a limited number low quantity high quality shooting yeah or melee you know, Fugan. Fugan shoots his lance at you, theoretically could almost kill you in one pop. Yeah. You go, okay, cool, I just ignore that one. I'm not even going to roll a save. Great So the, this, this strat instantly makes me think, if you're trying to get in that situation where you're trying to avoid having to use the point blank a- ambush, mm-hmm. uh, sorry, coordinate to engage, mm-hmm. it's you just pick up your stealth suits, and then next turn they're just bloop where you need them to be, so you've got a spotting unit. Yeah. So, which is... Spending the CP two different ways, same yeah. result essentially. Well, similar result, I suppose. You're using it to bail you out if you know a melee army is getting real close to one flank and you've got a ghost kill anchoring a point. You go, you yeah. know what? I don't like it. <laughs> Please get me out of there. And they've committed the resources to go there. Yeah. And then suddenly they've now got a w- run the other way back. Most of the time, nice. you're going to pick up stealth suits, use them to get angles on spotted units and or yeah. do actions. But maybe you just you know just use it to get you out of danger it's a really really nice toolbox strat to have and you'll be you'll be slamming it quite often nice right and then combat embarkation so your opponent's charge phase just after an enemy has declared a charge one tau empire infantry unit from your army that was selected as one of the targets of the charge and one friendly transport so i can see this being breaches and maybe a devil fish um, <laughs> So the effect is your your unit embarks. Uh, the requirement is that every model in your infantry unit must be within three inches, not wholly within, of that transport, and there must be sufficient capacity to embark in the the entire unit. Yeah, it's so, so good, solid. So if you're playing against an army with shooting, this strat doesn't come up. If you're playing against an army that doesn't have shooting, this is great. You spend the CP. You just get back. So here's the thing. What you're going to do with the breaches is you're going to advance the devil fish up the board and then you're going to get out within three inches, wholly within three inches, because that's how disembarking work. You're going to shooty, shooty, shoot your guns. It's going to be great. Things are going to die. You're going to kill that squad of eight bound that's holding the objective and you're going to feel great about things. 
then your opponent's going to try and charge you with some Corn Berserkers. And you say, you know what? This sounds like a bad idea to me. I'm going to get back in the transport. They get to reroute their charge. That's fine. You, maybe you make it that three inches longer, depending on how the positioning is. Um, you really want to forward think how you position your models and your, your transports if you're going to be using this against a combat army. If you can make it an un, you know, unreachable charge, that's incredible. Or even if it's just something that would slaughter your breaches, which is most things in the game, going into a fairly beefy tank, you know, sometimes that's going to survive. Or if it doesn't survive, you just disembark and, oh no, too bad, so sad. Potentially, you can get out without being, you know, being able to be tagged, depending on your positioning, or behind a wall, or just far enough away. Or, you know what, maybe you just have to fall back. You don't get a shoot, but your opponent didn't manage to kill you as well. So, you know, saving the important resources for later turns. This is either unusable, if you're playing against an army with good shooting, or even moderate shooting, or incredible if you're playing against an army that really wants to play in the fight phase. And then kind of linked to that, mm -hmm. the last strat is Photon Grenades. So... Your opponent's charge phase, just after an enemy has declared a charge, one Tau Empire grenade unit from your army that was just selected as a target of a charge. The enemy must immediately take a battle shock test, and until the end of the phase, subtract two from charge rolls made by that enemy unit. And you cannot target a unit that is within engagement range of one or more enemy units. So I, I really like this. Yeah. Like, the minus two to charge battle suits was a staple of 9th edition Tau. This is only on grenade units, which isn't battle suits, unfortunately. Um, it is going to be purely breaches, but I think breaches do a lot of the legwork in this detachment. We're going to see a lot of breaches uh, in Monkar and in Carry On as well. So I think that this is a really good strat. You don't slam it every time. You know, if your opponent's queued up a four inch charge, you don't bother making it a six unless, you know, that chance of them failing it and failing the reroll wins you the game. Sometimes yeah. you have to do these things. But if you can make, you know, an eight inch charge into a 10 inch charge, or if your opponent deep strikes, if your opponent deep strikes and is going for a nine inch charge and you make them an 11, that's amazing. That's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can't, your opponent can get around it because it's only a single unit. So they can declare a charge with something else first make you say, okay, I'm either going to use my, my strat here or not. But um, yeah, I still yeah. think it's really good. It's, it's Again, you don't want to have to use it. If you do use it, good stuff. And if you're, uh, if you're CP rich, you do mm -hmm. that. And then if you find it doesn't quite pan out, you, you do it. And then you also get back into transport. Wouldn't that be nice? I think the downside is these strats are really, really good. So yeah. unfortunately, you're not going to be CP rich. Um, imagine it's, if you did, though. Oh, imagine if you hypothetical. were. Hypothetical. Yeah, yeah. In, <laughs> in a world. Because you're trying, trying to play on turn three, if your opponent's playing KG, if they've given you the space to breathe, you might end up in a situation where you do have CP to spend. But um, yeah, this, the strats in this detachment are incredible. I really like them. Plus one to wound, plus one AP, um, uppy downy, <laughs> get out of jail free just, against just melee J just everything in here is at worst a good conditional strat that's like yes. the 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 floor of this detachment is this is good at certain times and yeah. then other things are just this is good so real wins on the strats front there yeah all right so moving on to the list um i think carrion has a lot of different ways it can go I think this is the way that excites me the most. Um, I think breaches are incredible. Breaches were incredible before. Breaches are even more incredible now. A comparison, you know, we've lost that big brick of um, of crisis suits. I don't know that that's necessarily a problem for this attachment because you just go, I'm going to run triple fire blade, triple breacher, triple devilfish. This is my sort of core offensive package. Um, I'm backing that up with a cold star. That Cold Star's got double missile pod, high output burst cannon, cyclic iron blaster, only one because you can only take one, a uh, single marker and a shield drone in there, and we've gone for precision of the patient hunter. Plus one to hit at all times, plus one to wound on turn three onwards. Then we're looking at the fire knife battle suits. Um, again, this is the uh, the double missile pod, um, cut and shield drone, just because you can't take the double shield drone anymore. What this does is you're fishing for as much... Um, sustained hits as possible. You don't have to... The reason we've gone for the Fire Knife here is because you get full rerolls to hit against full strength units. You're only running two squads of Tetras in this list. You've got a lot of things that you want to get full rerolls to hit with. I really like my Riptides hitting, you know, hitting on threes, rerolling. 
that feels really good. Um, the ghost kills as well. The breaches, there are a lot of threats that I want to uh, sort of tee up to have a lot of offensive output. So you're getting a pseudo um, Tetra by taking the Fire Knife suits. The missile pods are fine. They're strength 7, AP 1, 2 damage. But the strat in this detachment gives them, if they get close, the ability to get plus 1 to wound, uh, sorry, plus 1 AP as well. So what you'll find is you've got 19 shots at strength 7 or 8 that are AP 2, 2 damage. You can spend a CP to get plus one to wound if you're targeting something in an objective, but realistically, I think your breaches might have that covered. But you've just got high value, high volume AP22 damage output alongside, you know, the high output burst cannon and a couple of gun drones in that squad as well. Some of it's got plus one to wound. Um, I think this unit is is probably going to be worth running in this detachment. I think it's the only place you run the fire knife but I'm quite excited to see it. Before we get to the rest of the list, what do you feel about what we've got so far? So to me, it feels extremely aggressive, but also it feels like how Tau should play in as much as... I'm not going to lie, previous editions where there was so many crisis suits, it felt like the rest of the army didn't get to shine because that's all you got to see. So being mm. able to see things like Devilfish is full of infantry is just really quite exciting. And that it has a good role. I just, I'm excited for that. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, it's really good. What I like about it as well, most of the weapons on there are 30 inch range. You're trying to play for turn three. You still need to threaten to deal damage yep. to your opponent. You can't fire and fade. So you probably want to yep. be taking long range pot shots. This unit can do long range pot shots on turn one and two without too much fear of reprisal, mm -hmm. as long as you're not playing against Iron Storm or something of that. Yeah. So backing up that really aggressive core, um, which is trying to hold back until turn three as much as possible, yep. with the exception of one of the breacher bricks, which can go wild on turn two. Um, we've got double ghost kill. Ghost kills are incredible objective holders. And then triple rip tides riptides are also really good objective holders because these two units here are the only sort of tanky things that you can put out against a shooting army ghost kills obviously have uh, pseudo lone op you can't shoot them outside of 18 inches uh, and then riptides are just tanky enough to take shooting against anything but sort of the most aggressive uh, shooting lists a lot of things are going to really just hit that four up in Vun, that two up armor save the four up in Vun. you can tag them into cover a little bit and they're going to have actual difficulty dealing with it plus once you're getting to those sustained hits too with the full reroll with the, the tetras um you're getting really efficient output from them and then obviously to uh, support the rest of the list two squads of tetras two squads of stealth suits i'd like a third especially with the uppy downy strat but uh, we just ran out of points so we did talk before the show mm -hmm. about putting in Commander Farsight to get free use of a strat. Yeah, yeah. Mostly for that free, like, plus one AP. I think that would be really good on him. The problem is, while that's good, yeah, and it is good, don't get me wrong, it is yeah, good, yeah. he doesn't have weapons that care about being boosted. We now have less guns on crisis suits. We have thirty-three percent of the guns on a crisis suit that we used to. Uh, sorry, crisis unit as we used to have, because yeah. half the squad size and you know only two thirds of the guns. So I feel like if you're taking a commander, it's because you want them to get the buff of the squad that you're attached to. I'd be interested to see people running far sight um, in this detachment, see how he performs. I think there are very good battle tactics that yeah. you want to duplicate, getting that extra AP twice. Um, you probably run him with the, you know, the, the burst cannon squad, getting them to AP two is, is really solid. Yeah. Uh, but it just didn't quite make the cut for me. I think we had more competitive choices. Yeah. Um, and then to me, kind of the, the one thing I kind of dabbled with was sneaking in an ethereal, mm. but at the same time, I find quite often when you try to sneak one little dude like that in, you're probably then losing a key unit and then it becomes a little bit lopsided, perhaps. Yeah, it's a, an ethereal is very good. The, like we said, the strats in this attachment yeah. are good. Um, you're going to find that you're playing um, the you know tactical cards anyway. You're probably yeah. going to be gaining CP in a couple of turns. It's yeah. more reliable than um, you know fishing that four up. I think an ethereal is good if you can fit one in, but we yeah. just didn't have the points. We wanted to go really maximum on damage. And um, just as a kind of a a, a, a last note, we often mm. lean into the Tetras. Obviously, you can't actually currently buy them. Um, <laughs> what would you use as an alternative 
in a current range if you didn't have Tetris to do a similar job? I know that you can't, there isn't an exact thing, so, but just... In the, in the Tau Codex, specific, overall, just to yeah. speak overall, if you can't get yeah. Tetris, don't worry about it. Run triple stealth suits, run one squad of Pathfinders. That's going to cover you for most of your ability. If there's an enhancement uh, in your detachment that you're playing that gives you a buff, like in this one, you can get the lethal hits if uh, a, you know, a character unit is spotting. That's quite good. Or if you're in retaliation uh, cadre, you can look at running flamer suits that can spot for their other suits. I think in this detachment... It's try and get hold of Tetris because the full rerolls yep. to hit are very important when you're fishing for those sustained hits too. That's yep. the main thing that I'd say. Cool. All right. Well, thank you as always for watching. Do give us a like, leave a comment. Um, I'm actually quite excited to see what people are running in this detachment because despite it being the one that is as close to what we had before, I think it's changed significantly. And I think what people will want to run in this detachment have changed significantly. Um, obviously, we're not seeing a lot of tournament results with them come in yet. We're waiting for the full release on it. So please do let us know what you're running in the comments down below. Um, as always, we're going to be back next week. Uh, you may have seen that we've got Orcs and Custodes on the horizon. So we will definitely be talking about one of those with a special guest. Stay tuned for more.